Um, but as I said, the story starts in 1968 uh, in Thailand or in Bangkok by then when it was called. Um, uh, sorry, by in Siam by then when it was called. Uh, the story starts with, with a CIA agent. Uh, the CIA agent, his job was to investigate foreign cost investments. Uh, so what he would do, he would go to these boat yards and paint or draw uh, designs of boats and what kind of boats were in the water, sailing around there. And he would draw this into a blue book. And the purpose of this blue book was he would give this blue book to the Coast Guard so the Coast Guard could identify ships at high seas. Now back then they didn't really have radar, so this was the only measure of really identifying what the ships were doing if they were hauling cargo or if they were passenger ships or what they were doing. So this was his job. Uh, so the CIA agent really fell in love with the junk. The CIA, uh, so the Siam junk. Um, and normally these junk vessels, these were built out as cargo vessels. Um, so the CIA, yeah, these junks, they could easily hold up to 40 tons of weight, 40 tons of cargo. Uh, now built out as that, they have a long keel, shallow draft, uh, similar mass design as this. Um, but of course he didn't want to have a cargo vessel, he wanted to have a yacht. So he went to one of these traditionally built uh, yards and he asked them to build them a yacht. So built out as a yacht, she has a master cabin in the back, a saloon, a kitchen, a bath, a bathroom, uh, some bunk beds in the front. Built out as a yacht, she has all of this. Um, she was built by hand. Um, everything is held together. The deck that you guys are standing on is teak wood. You have the main mast and the front mast, solid gold tree trees, shaped by hand, put in place. Um, everything is held together by bronze screws and copper nails. Uh, back in the day, they didn't use any power tools to do this. Of course, today we uh, do it all a little bit quicker. Um, has an iron keel from the front running all the way to the back. Uh, that's pretty much, and she has some iron struts, of course, for the engine. But that's pretty much the only iron she is she has in in the boat design. Uh, so it's very traditional. The sail rigging is also very primitive. This is how they used to have it back then. They only used to sail with the wind and not against it. So that's how she was built. Anyway, built out as a yacht. He moved aboard with his family. Uh, he moved aboard with a German Shepherd and a monkey called Edward. Hey. And, uh, he, he, he went. Um, he went to. Uh, he said, I guess, no. <laughs> okay, he sailed all the way to the sewage canal, and he wanted to go through the sewage canal, uh, but that time the sewage canal was closed, and he didn't want to go all the way around it because it was very rough. But there was a freighter there, and. By chance, he met or the CIA agent met this guy in the bar and uh, the, the captain of the freighter, and they decided to put the Samoa on the freighter and ship her around the Cape of Africa. And while it was a Polish freighter, they shipped her up to the Baltic Sea. Now, in the Baltic Sea, they put her back into the water, and of course, she went uh, from there. She went to Denmark, uh, Norway, uh, through the canals of Holland, all the way down to the Mediterranean Sea. And then from the Mediterranean Sea, she went into the... Well, okay. <laughs> sitting yesterday in a room, so I suppose. Uh, yeah, from the Mediterranean, she went into the... Anyway, anyway. Pacific, <laughs> and then... From... Anyway, from there, from the Pacific, she went all the way to the Caribbean. And that's where she was laying there. After all of these 15 years of living on the boat, and staying, doing all the maintenance, living on board, uh, he got fed up of doing the maintenance and he put the boat back up, uh, where was it? Somewhere in the States, he put the boat on dry dock and uh, he set it for sale. Now there was another couple, Richard and Anne Louise, uh, they fell in love with the boat, they did all the maintenance, overhauled the engine and they moved aboard. The now they didn't sail too far, they sailed into the Caribbean Ocean for five years, they lived on board, sailed through all the islands, uh, they enjoyed it very much so. And uh, they arrived here in Bonaire. After five years of traveling, of course, alone, no TV, rolling around, she got pregnant, uh, pregnant Anne Louise got pregnant, and they had a child here in Bonaire. Uh, they decided to stick here to this island in the nice cove, uh, have a house, and do charters with the Samoor. Uh, that was their living back then. And this is when uh, my family, Chris and Yvonne, uh, we are 
kind of lost Swiss people also kind of uh, sailing around the world. I came here when I was about four years of age, and a little bit before the 2000s. Uh, we, they, Richard asked us to work on the Samoor, do the charters for him, and we did uh, for many years to come. And in the time we took it over, and uh, necessarily we always have nice people on board, and she's been sailing here in the Caribbean for the rest of her life. Uh, so she's almost 50, we're almost having an anniversary for her, for the Samoor, of course. Uh, so that's very nice. Uh, so that was a little bit about the story. I'm sorry I missed up a little bit on the where she went everywhere. As I said, I zone out a lot when my dad says. And, uh, yeah. I hope uh, I hope it's a little bit understanding. If you have any questions about the boat that I can explain you guys about, now would be the time to shoot. Um, okay, then I would like to step over right away. Uh, we're very close now to Climb Air. Climb